Hello, um, actually, I'm having a technical Hello, day. and welcome to the Mesa Public Schools Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Jenny, and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can, however, use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to ch check out the schedule on our website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash greater Arizona. That's strivescan.com slash greater Arizona. And now I'd like to turn over to our first school. We'll start with Cornish College of the Arts. Awesome. Thanks so much. Let me pull up my screen. Do, do, do. Mm. Okay. So hello, everyone. My name is Albert Rubio, and I am an admissions counselor here at Cornish College of the Arts. So Cornish is the premier visual and performing arts college in the Pacific Northwest, and we are located in Seattle, Washington. Cornish is over 100 years old, and we are one of the few arts colleges in the country where visual and performing artists actually get to study together. So this is our founder, Nellie Cornish, or Aunt Nellie, as many of the students used to call her back in the day. And she and the many teaching artists who followed her believed in an innovative approach to education that was exposing her artists to all of the arts. And that really led to some of the greatest innovations in the arts during the early 20th century. It shaped much of how we create and appreciate work today. And it also helped to put the Pacific Northwest and specifically Seattle on the map as a thriving arts community. Our mission here is to provide uh, students aspiring to become practicing artists with an educational program of the highest possible quality in an environment that nurtures creativity and intellectual curiosity while preparing them to contribute to society as artists, citizens, and innovators. And Cornish realizes this mission by offering baccalaureate studies in the performing and the visual arts and by serving as a focal point for public presentation, artistic criticism, participation, and discussion of the arts. Our degrees are also designed to help our students build all of the skills that they need to navigate the professional landscapes of the 21st century. We educate our students in critical thinking, creative problem solving, collaboration, as well as the generation of new work. They focus on traditional, interdisciplinary, and experimental art forms. And the faculty members at Cornish are actually professional working artists, and they're committed mentors as well. So they maintain thriving careers in their respective fields. They maintain all of their industry connections. And that really provides them with all of the knowledge and the skill necessary to train artists who are making work today because they're still making work today. Our community at Cornish is also dedicated to small classes, mentorship, and personalized instruction. So our average class size is about 13 students, and the faculty to student ratio is currently one to seven. So as an artist studying at Cornish, uh, you really do get all of that individualized and personal instruction that's really important to successful arts education. So Cornish is an urban campus and we are located right in the heart of downtown Seattle and we are immersed within the arts and culture of the city. So Seattle is one of the world's epicenters for the visual and the performing arts and that really makes it an ideal city to pursue an artistic education. Seattle houses some of the country's best live music, theater and dance companies, a popular music scene that has garnered national as well as international attention. We've got over 20 live theater venues. We also have Pioneer Square, which is known as one of the country's most prominent art gallery districts. We are also home to the Fifth Avenue Theater, the Seattle International Film Festival, Seattle Art Museum, and the Upstream and Bumbershoot Music Festivals, just to name a few of the many arts organizations that you have the opportunity to interface with. Essentially, Seattle is a thriving professional community for practicing artists and designers, and Cornish really has been at the forefront of that creative scene for more than 100 years. So in terms of our exact location in the city of Seattle, we are located in Seattle's South Lake Union District. And our campus is surrounded by creative agencies, architecture and design firms, many nonprofits, and we're within walking distance from all of the prominent creative spaces for performance, art, and culture. So you'll find Cornish alumni, faculty, and current students making lots of bold, innovative work all over the city. 
You're also going to have access to a variety of state of the art creative and performance spaces. And these are available for use for all of our majors, regardless of their discipline. So visual artists are making art in individual and shared studios, materials labs, editing and recording suites, and much more. And performance artists are rehearsing, performing, and learning in a wide array of practice spaces, black box studios, historic concert halls, and the iconic Cornish Playhouse and Al Hadith Black Box Studio, which are located in Seattle Center, which is most famously where the Space Needle is, and it also houses all of the city's major large-scale arts and performance venues. So this is our residence hall. It's the Cornish Commons. It's a 20-story state-of-the-art residence hall that we actually had built with artists in mind. The Commons features plenty of space and lots of special amenities like private bathrooms, movement studios, practice rooms. We've even got an art studio. 20th floor is also reserved just for our residents and it boasts amazing views of the city. So these are the degrees we offer in the visual arts. You can see that we offer these over here. Performing arts, we offer these over here. Sometimes we are known as the BFA school. And for music students, we offer a Bachelor of Music. And then we also have some BA options that are specifically designed for transfer students who are coming in with an associate's degree or an equivalent amount of credits. So in the 2019-2020 academic year, Cornish actually became the first and the only art college in the country to lower its tuition. We lowered it by 20% and we award over 4 million in scholarships each year to over 95% of our students with all admitted students being automatically guaranteed for those merit-based scholarships that are guaranteed for four years. If you're interested in applying, you can go to apply.cornish.edu forward slash apply, or you can apply through the Common App as well. And over here, I'll just leave y'all with some deadlines. December 1st is our early action deadline. It's a non-binding decision deadline, but you'll know whether you're into the school by mid-December, um, and you'll be first in line for scholarship consideration. Our regular deadline is February 15th. Uh, students who are interested in being considered for financial aid, we suggest that you apply by then. After February 15th, we still take applications and we admit students on a space available basis and we give out scholarship money if we still have some available. So thanks so much for listening everyone and hope that some of y'all will consider applying to Cornish College of the Arts this year. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. And to all of our participants, you can ask questions of any of our schools here today using that Q&A function on your screen. So feel free to use that at any time. Up next, we have Otis College of Art and Design. Hi, my name is Felix and I am an admissions counselor here at Otis College of Art and Design. I'm gonna be sharing a presentation with you guys. All right, so I have this QR code for um, checking in if you're a student, um, but yeah, here's my information and you'll be able to email me afterwards as well. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about Otis. So we have a very small student to faculty ratio, ratio which means you'll get to know your faculty quite well. And also um, faculty are all tops in their field. Um, they're all working in the various industries, uh, entertainment and art in Los Angeles. Here's a demographic breakdown. We're in the top 1% of college diversity, according to the Chronicle of Higher Education. And we also scored four out of five stars on the Campus Pride Index. Um, and let me tell you a little about where we are. We're in Los Angeles. We're uh, right here. We're about five minutes from the beach. We're also down the street from another school, Loyola Marymount University. And we offer cross-registration um, between the schools. And uh, yeah, there's some great reasons why you would want to study in Los Angeles. There's um, a lot of galleries, a lot of museums, uh, brands that need designing, uh, a lot of entertainment that uh, you know offers uh, work in uh, animation, uh, fashion, et cetera. Um, and there are 797,000 plus creative jobs here, according to the Otis Report in the Creative Economy. Something that you really want to think about when you're uh, looking at schools is uh, the facilities. Uh, so Otis has a lot of really great facilities. We have a wood shop, a metal shop, a letterpress studio, screen printing, lighting studio, photography studio, um, a lot of digital art labs that have these high powered computers. We're also 24 seven campus, which means you'll be able to work in the studios at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., et cetera. Uh, we have two galleries on campus um, and we have a painting studio, ceramic studio and sculpture studio. Uh, so the first year is a foundation year. Um, so it's more exploratory. We have the life drawing track and the creative practices track within that um, first year. So the creative practices track is more uh, risk, uh, research and history informed and life drawing is, you know, drawing from life. Um, but the foundation year is very exploratory, focused on color theory and um, basic design, design principles, and art history. 
these are our list of majors in orange. Uh, in the purple are our areas of emphasis, and uh, you'll be able to take electives in other departments as well. And here are our list of minors. So as you can see, most of them are in studio arts and design, but there are, we also have um, ones that would complement your art practice, such as sustainability, entrepreneurship, community arts engagement, and more. Um, so there are a lot of jobs in art and design, as you guys know. Um, and here are some of the places where our students uh, intern and uh, go on to work after graduating. Um, I, I actually went to Otis and, uh, and graduated in 2020 and I interned right here at the Getty Center Museum. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit more about how to apply. Um, so as a first year, you'd uh, go through the Common App. Um, if you're coming in as a transfer student, you'd apply through the Otis application on the website. Um, we want 500 words on why you want to study art and design now, um, not so much like, you know, when you were a kid. Uh, and uh, we want transcripts. We're going to need your portfolio via slide room. And we're an SAT and ACT optional school. Um, we have two portfolio options, the open portfolio option and the structured portfolio option. The open portfolio option is, um, you know, most like other schools. So it's 10 to 20 images of your best work. Um, here are our deadlines. December 1st is our fall early action deadline. February 15th is our fall priority deadline. And November 1st is our spring priority deadline. And you want to make sure you apply by the priority deadline in order to be considered for merit scholarship. Um, so um, our scholarship, yeah, each portfolio is automatically looked at for merit scholarship. Um, and those merit scholarships are based on the strength of your portfolio and your academics. And we also have need-based Otis diversity scholarships. 92% of our Otis students receive institutional aid. Um, and yeah, here's the FAFSA deadline. And uh, this is how you can connect with us. So you can go to otis.edu slash connect for one-on-one -on -one appointments. We can do portfolio reviews. Um, there are also free portfolio development sessions, um, workshops, financial aid info sessions, and tours, virtual and on campus. And you can uh, connect with current students to talk uh, more about, the, about you know, their student experience at otis.edu slash chat. And um, here's my last slide. Um, here's that QR code again for uh, signing in. Um, but yeah, feel free to email me at fwang at otis.edu if you have any questions. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And again, you, participants, you can ask questions of any of our schools here at any time using that Q&A function. And all of our schools will also be putting their contact info in the chat as well, so you can get in contact with them. Up next, we have Kansas City Art Institute. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Bo Hubbard. I am an admissions counselor for Kansas City Art Institute. So my job is to help students with the application process. And if you are accepted to KCAI, then um, continue working with you on financial aid, hopefully make it a reality for you to come to KCAI. So here to tell you a little bit about Kansas City Art Institute, you all are lucky that uh, all of the schools presenting tonight have amazing art programs so that you can hear about different art programs across the country. Um, so I always like to start with Kansas City, right? Why move to Kansas City to be an artist? We have a very vibrant art community in Kansas City. The school is over 100 years old, so we have very deep roots in the city. Maybe you're, you are a student first year at KCAI having the opportunity to show your artwork. Maybe it's a garage gallery or one of the, like a shipping container pop-up gallery. There are opportunities for students to participate in the art community and build your resume. Kansas City also is a very affordable city to live in. So as you start to get your feet on the ground as a young artist, maybe even you know renting a studio space outside of your living space, being able to afford that and start to make your way in the arts career. KCAI is located between two major art museums, the Nelson Atkins Museum and the Kemper Museum. Um, we are sandwiched right in between these art museums. People come to this little art bubble in the middle of Kansas City to see art at the museums, but also see our students working and our students have that chance to um, show their artwork to the community. So you can see on this map just how we are right in between these two museums. They're also both free. So if you're in an art history class, being able to walk across the street and see some examples of some of the things that you're learning about in your textbooks. We just finished a new residence hall for our students. So um, new dining center, coffee shop as well. 
as um, the rooms. The rooms are suite style living. So it's two people to a room and then you share a, a bathroom with two other people. So a lot of privacy, a lot of space in these rooms and a lot of opportunity to kind of customize it and make it your own. We then converted our old living center into new animation and illustration studios. So these are the two largest majors at KCAI, illustration being the largest with about 150 students. So KCAI is one of the smaller art schools in the country. We have about 700 students total. Um, so a very small community, but definitely great to build those connections with your classmates as well as your teachers. So most, much like some of the other art schools here, um, all of our faculty are practicing artists. So you're learning from people that have built their career in the arts. You know, an arts career is not always a direct path. There are many different opportunities for artists. And so it is very helpful to learn from someone that has built their own path in the arts, that's showing their artwork around the country, participating in opportunities, and hopefully can be a very valuable resource for you as you start to look for career internship opportunities. We also give all of our students their own dedicated workspace their first year at KCAI. It's pretty rare to come in as a first semester student and have your own workspace. Um, so at KCAI, no matter what major you go into and no matter what grade level you are, you'll always have a place to store your materials, always have a place to hang up your inspiration on the wall, and display your finished pieces as well. These are some of the places our students have interned at in the last few years. So whether it's a big name like Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon or one of our local partnerships at the Nelson Museum next door or at Hallmark, the greeting card company, which is headquartered in Kansas City. Internships are required for our students and again, really helpful in building those connections as a student and hopefully setting up a career um, opportunity for you after graduation. We have 11 different studio majors at KCAI with the option to double major in art history or creative writing, as well as a few different minor opportunities. All of our students before going into their major spend the entire first year in the foundation program where you're really building your skills, continuing those things that you've learned in high school, like line and color composition, some of those technical skills, but also starting to experiment in different materials, different mediums, learn how to be a full-time artist, right? Making artwork 40, 50 hours a week is not always a natural process. It definitely takes some time to teach you how to continue having ideas, going through different options and um, continuing kind of that creative lifestyle that you're embarking on, right? So maybe you take a class in bookmaking or paper making or ceramic sculpture, working with sound design or video art, really a great chance to try out some things that maybe you haven't done in high school before you have to decide your major. So we do require a portfolio for the application as well as a personal statement in your transcript. Test scores are optional for us as well. Our primary deadline is February 1st. If you wanna apply early, it would be December 1st, really so you can have your decision before the end of the year. And lastly, KCAI last year was able to award all of our students a merit scholarship. The minimum merit scholarship last year was $15,000 a year, but most students were averaging about $20,000 a year. Um, in merit scholarship, our application is free. So I would really recommend applying if you are interested in the arts and starting to weigh some different scholarship options. Um, finally, here is my contact information, somewhat like a virtual business card. So whether you are watching a recording of this or on live, you can kind of screenshot and have this, but I will also put my info in the chat as well as some links to our website. So thank you all for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Up next, we have the Ringling College of Art and Design. Hello everyone, I am Sam. I am an admissions counselor here at Ringling. All right, um, we are located in Sarasota, Florida and we offer about 13 different majors. 
We are most known for our computer animation major. Um, our largest major is gonna be illustration. We also have two new majors that are about three years into their program, and that's gonna be entertainment design and virtual reality. Sam, we're not seeing a screen share or your video, oh. just FYI. Uh, yep, there, okay. Let's try that one more time. Sorry about that. All right. No, you're good. All right, let's take two. Okay, <laughs> so we offer 13 different majors here at Ringling. As I was saying, here's a full list of them. Um, including computer animation, illustration, entertainment design, and all of those other ones. Um, as I was saying, we are located in Sarasota, Florida. So we are about an hour south of Tampa, about 10 minutes from the beach, which is really nice. And then about two hours from Orlando, which you know has those amusement parks, Disney, Universal, all of that stuff. Uh, the community of, Air of Sarasota is pretty artistic. We have a of course, the Ringling Museum located up the road. And we also have a visual arts center that has, you know, plays and musicals that come in town. And of course, a lot of galleries located on campus, but also throughout the whole city. Our campus is pretty small. You're no, 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 never more than five to 10 minutes from where you need to be, from where you need to go. Um, we do offer housing on campus. It's not required to live on campus at all during your four years. We did just build a new freshman dorm last year, so it is pretty new. We're also in the process of building a new dining hall. And we do also have 24-hour labs. Our student population right now is about 1,700. We're not looking to get much bigger than that because we really do like our student to teacher ratio, which is about 11 to one. We also have 24 hour labs, all of our equipment on campus is you no know, older than two years old. It's really important that our equipment is industry standard for our students to be prepared to for after they graduate. Our career services is pretty awesome on campus. They're in charge of bringing over a hundred different recruiters to campus, um, whether it is those big names, Google, Netflix, Disney, or even it could be a local coffee shop in town. Um, they're in charge of having these companies come and do presentations and do recruitment for internships, job opportunities. Um, they're also here to help our students with portfolio, cover letter, resume, um, getting, in getting students in connection with alumni who are working in the industry that they're interested in working in. And they're also with our students for life. So if you're five years after graduation and you're not sure where you wanna go, you can fall back to career services and they will still offer you that same sort of support as you were when you were a student. So we are on rolling admission here at Ringling meaning we don't really have a deadline. The only deadline that we do have a, um, for is gonna be for computer animation. It's gonna be that early action deadline um, of November 1st. And then the final deadline is January 15th. Um, you would start your application on the Common App. That's where you'll fill, it, fill, it out, fill out your basic information, your family history, uh, write a personal essay. And then after that, we're looking for high school or school official transcripts, a letter of recommendation, portfolio. That tends to differ depending on what major you are interested in studying. We are also essay and ACT optional. Uh, that final deadline that down there, that is our, uh, to be can make sure you considered for all merit-based scholarships. That's February 15th. Those scholarships range from a couple thousand all the way to 25,000. And those scholarships do roll over all four years. So typically for portfolio, we are looking from anywhere from 10 to 20 of your best pieces. We're looking for quality over quantity. Um, for the only majors that kind of differ is for business of art and design, you do not need to submit a portfolio. However, we do encourage that you submit a portfolio because we do look at that for scholarship opportunities. And then for film, we ask about five, and that's because we don't want our students to have to worry about submitting more than 10 films, that's crazy. Um, so yes. That is really all I have. I'm gonna throw my information in the chat for you all, um, but feel free to let me know 
um, and reach out if you have any further questions. Perfect, thank you so much. Up next, we have University of the Arts. Thank you. Just gonna pull everything up. So my name is Sarah Accione. I am a senior admissions counselor here at the University of the Arts in Philadelphia. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with University of the Arts, we are an arts focused university with over 20 different majors, 25 minors and nine grad programs located right in center city, Philadelphia. As you can see here, um, our programs span across visual, performing, and liberal arts. So we have creative writing, sculpture, animation, vocal performance, music business, graphic design, illustration, and the list really goes on and on. One important thing to note about University of the Arts is that we are awarding Bachelor of Fine Arts degrees, um, as opposed to a BA degree that you might find in your research when you're looking at other institutions. So just something to keep in mind is that we do have a BFA program. What kind of makes us different? So when your passion is in the arts, you can be whatever you wanna be and you should be. So at University of the Arts, we allow you to study across different disciplines. We merge both the visual and the performing arts on our campus. And we strongly believe that dancers can be painters, that graphic designers can be guitarists and that actors can be poets. We want you to be as creative as possible. We also believe that the second someone tries to stick you in a box, it's really going to stifle your creativity. Your creativity is what matters most to us. You have the opportunity to collaborate with other students during your time here. So UArts is really looking for students that are interested in collaborating. Every year our creative writing and illustration students work together to publish our student literary magazine called The Underground Pool. We have film students that collaborate with our composition students in order to have scores for their films. Um, we also have an entire school of theater that would love to be their resources for actors and actresses. Um, we have dancers that need headshots and we have photography students that need models. So you're gonna begin networking um, with other artists within your field and outside of your field. And we're located in Center City, Philadelphia. Philadelphia is an art centric city full of opportunities with tons of performance spaces, museums, parks, and restaurants. Center City Philadelphia is the place to be. We are located right on the Avenue of the Arts, also known as Broad Street, if you're familiar with Philly. Um, between the Academy of Music, the Kimmel Center, the Walnut Street Theater, we're also an easy commute to New York City as well as the DC Baltimore area. So you can kind of have the best of all of those cities in one. When it comes to food in Philly, you name it, you can probably find it here. We're also a huge foodie city, coffee shops on every block, great bites all around, uh, ranging from you know, our famed cheesesteaks to the best ramen in Chinatown. Being a part of the city, we are also a uh, cornerstone to the art scene in Philadelphia. You'll find art in, our, in varied forms with our 12 on-campus art galleries, which feature work for visiting artists, both established and emerging, as well as original pieces from our own students, faculty, alumni, and staff. Our performance spaces play host to a variety of must-see shows, from student productions to award-winning dance troupes, traveling theater productions, and world-class musicians. We also have four gender-neutral apartment-style residence halls that make it easy to find things to do on campus and around Philly. Um, they are a very unique living experience. Uh, you no know two rooms are alike. So some are studio apartments, one bedroom, two bedrooms. Um, they all have their own private bathrooms. Some have full kitchens, kitchenettes, and others have communal kitchen areas. An education in the arts is just the beginning of your journey as well. And we have great resources and faculty that are there. Our faculty are all working professionals in the field. Um, our one faculty on the left here, Mike Addy's latest film premiered in the 2021 Sundance Film Festival. And on the right is one of our dance faculty, Tommy Wahid Evans, who was actually awarded the 2021 Guggenheim Fellowship for his choreography. So they are great resources for our students because they're working artists, they're living it and breathing it as well. 
We also understand that navigating the cost of college can be challenging. Uh, all of our students are eligible for a merit-based scholarship once they apply. Um, and we encourage all of our students to also file their FAFSAs in order to obtain any need-based aid. Our application process is three easy steps. Uh, so you do have to apply directly through our website. We are not on the Common App. Then you're gonna request for your official high school transcripts to be sent to us. And then you're gonna complete your portfolio audition or interview depending on the program that you are interested in. All of our performing arts students do have to complete an audition and our visual arts students do submit a portfolio that is 15 to 20 pieces of original artwork um, from the last two years. We are also a test blind school, which means that even if you do submit your test scores, we will not look at them or, or use that information. If you wanna check out some of our student work, I recommend following us on Instagram at University of the Arts. Hashtag you artist uh, shows our students, faculty, staff, and alumni that all post there as well. And then the last slide is my contact information. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or you can reach out to um, admissions at uarts.edu as well. Thank you so much. And just a reminder to our participants, we still have time. If you have any questions for our schools here today, feel free to drop them in the Q&A. And last but not least, we have Maine College of Art and Design. Hi there, my name is Erin and I am an admissions counselor with Maine College of Art and Design. And let me just throw my contact information up. Um, I'll throw this up in the chat at the end as well. And as an admissions counselor, I'm going to be there helping you through the college admissions process. Uh, we have a really great team and we divide up the US. Um, I have all of the states in blue. And if you're looking for any other of our admissions counselors information, feel free to let me know. Um, so I'm going to start off by situating us. Uh, we're located in Portland, Maine, and Portland is a really great city, um, super vibrant. We call it the right sized city because it's super walkable. Um, we're right in downtown Portland, uh, and there are a lot of opportunities right within walking distance. Uh, honestly, there is... Um, a really amazing community that I highly encourage you coming and seeing in person if you're able to. Um, we have a lot of different um, opportunities like um, we have the Old Port, which is about a five minute walk away from our campus. Um, we also have access to a really great ferry system that goes to the islands right off the coast of Portland. Uh, we do have uh, green space throughout Portland as well, and we have a main College of Art and Design only green space. Um, sometimes classes are held out here, sometimes student life holds events out here, and you can also use this at your own leisure time uh, to come hang out with your friends. We are right in the arts district of Portland, and we're literally surrounded by artist spaces on all sides of our building. Uh, we have opportunities internally, uh, like the main College of Art and Design holiday sale. We have the Institute of Contemporary Art um, at Main College of Art and Design, uh, which features a rotating selection of curated shows featuring outside artists. And we also have student work that is held um, and sold in uh, our Mecca Collect sale that happens every summer. And out in the streets of Portland, you'll find a lot of evidence uh, from our alumni, um, one of those being the Portland Mural Initiative. So if you ever visit Portland, um, take a look around the sides of buildings and uh, most likely you'll see art done by our alumni. 
Portland also has this really great opportunity for artists called First Friday, and it's where artists take to the streets to sell their work. And this is a great opportunity for you to make a little bit of money if you choose to participate as a student, as well as making local connections. Uh, a lot of galleries do openings on First Friday, and the art supply store right across the street does an extra 20% discount on art supplies. We do have a first year live on requirement and we have two first year housing options. We have Oak, which is more of a traditional dormitory style experience. Um, you will share a bathroom with the room next door to yours. Um, so it's not like a communal bathroom down the hall like some schools have. And we do offer all gender housing in all of our housing options. Uh, our second first year housing option is called Shepley, and this is apartment style. Uh, so you'll be sharing a room with one other person, and it's kind of like a suite. So you'll be sharing common spaces like a kitchen, a dining room, and a bathroom right within your apartment. We have a, 11 different majors and seven different minors at Maine College of Art and Design. Uh, you can see them on screen here. Uh, our largest majors right now are our animation and game art major, our illustration major, and our painting major. And what's really great about Maine College of Art and Design is um, what makes us unique, which I'll touch on uh, in just a moment. So we are a very small school. We're about 500 students total, and that includes our graduate population of students. So this is going to enable you to have a really close connection with our faculty members who are all working artists. Uh, we have a 10 to one student to faculty ratio. The faculty member in this image here, um, this is Adam Fisher, who's worked on stop motion films uh, like Coraline and Kubo and the Two Strings. Uh, so you're able to have that opportunity to connect with uh, actually working artists. And it's kind of like a networking opportunity for you. We do have 24 hour studio access for our students. So if you're inspired at 2 a.m. and you want to go in and work, you can. Uh, and we also give students two whole years of their own personal studio space within the school. So you're able to make connections about how you work as an artist with the support of your faculty still there in areas that are catered to the needs of each major. We are also interdisciplinary. So this means that you're able to carve your own unique path as an artist through the courses that you're taking, even after you declare your major in your second year. So if you have something that you're really interested in, uh, you can go ahead and take a class in that. Um, my personal example is I was a printmaking major and I took uh, sculpture classes, ceramics classes, darkroom photography classes, because I thought that was really going to enhance my studio practice. And we have this really great initiative called Artists at Work, and it's there for you while you're a student, but also there to support you after you've graduated. And Artists at Work is there to make sure that you have the tools and skills that you need to be a successful working artist and whatever that means to you, whether that is a resume writing workshop, internship, residency, they make sure that our alumni are prepared to go out into the field. So if you're looking at to apply, we have a few um, materials that we're looking for. Uh, and the most important deadline to keep in mind is February 1st. This is going to enable you to be eligible for our racial justice scholarships and our full tuition scholarship. And if you would like to find out more information about those two opportunities, uh, you can find those on our How to Apply page of our website. And we also have a pre-college program, and you can also find that on our website as well. Let me just pull my contact information back up. Uh, thank you all for being such a great audience, and I look forward to answering any questions that folks have. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, our schools have put their contact info in the chat. If you do have any questions, you can still use that Q&A function. But in the meantime, um, I'll pose a few questions 
for all of our schools here today. So I'll ask everyone to come back on camera at this point and we will go through a little bit of Q&A. Um, so our first question for the evening is, um, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So what's your best advice for our participants here tonight? And we'll start with Cornish College. Thanks so much, Jenny. Um, I think my advice is just to uh, keep your options open and apply. Um, if you're scared about all of these fees, ask if there's a fee waiver. Most of us probably have one to offer you. Um, but check it out. Um, even if you're like, I don't know how I feel about going to uh, all the way across the country, but I really like what they said about their school. Um, go talk to, talk to us a little bit more, get to know us a little bit better. Um, but I think exploring is definitely a piece of advice I would give. Thank you. Otis College? Yeah, um, I think that uh, each school has such a different feeling. So uh, it's really important to visit the campus when you're down to your uh, like top five list if you can't visit every single school you're interested in. Thank you. Kansas City? Um, yeah, I would recommend um, first kind of seeing what kind of environment you want. I mean, so many schools offer very similar programs. It can be really helpful to um, try to talk to a current student if you can, um, talk to someone and get their experience. But yeah, I mean, at figuring out, you know, do you want to go to a small school, a big school? Do you want to be away from home or close to home? Those are two like good initial questions to start with. Thank you so much, great advice. Ringling College? I think just even, obviously I agree with like, I've been nodding my head this whole time. Um, yeah, visiting the schools is really important and even just try reaching out to a counselor. Um, that's why we're here. We're here to help you and guide you in what, whatever way, whether it's, you know, doing these portfolio reviews, um, talking about, again, whether it's that big school, like what you want through your college experience. That's what we're here to help you in whatever way we can. So yeah, just, we're not scary. I promise. Just come out and try to and talk to us. So yeah. Absolutely. I hear that a lot. Every time we do one of these, everyone says, we're not scary, I promise. And and I'm you're not. I work with you day in and day out. And that's what you're here for is to help students. So fantastic advice. Thank you. University of the Arts. Yeah. In addition to what everyone has already said, um, one of my biggest pieces of advice for students is um, to look and compare the different requirements, right? Especially if you're a performing arts student, when you're making those portfolios, like, you know, if three schools need a dance solo, don't make up three different dance solos, right? You can use the same one. Or if you need a monologue, you can you can use the same one. Or if everybody requires a self-portrait, you can use it. So, so just don't continue to reinvent the wheel, right? Like look and compare to not stress yourself out <laughs> too much and see what materials you, you can reuse um, for multiple applications, and that's an okay thing to do, and you should. Um, so that's always my biggest, biggest piece of advice. It's great. Thank you so much. Maine College? Yeah, I agree with everything that everyone said so far. Uh, definitely don't be afraid to do your research. Dig around on websites, on social media. I know that most schools have a pretty great presence on social media and really just find what is the best fit for you. And we're here to help you through that process by answering questions, connecting you with current students. Maybe you wanna to talk to one of our faculty members. Um, it's really just about um, finding where you would like uh, to continue your education. Absolutely. And Felix added in the chat that a spreadsheet is a great way to keep track of requirements. So another great tidbit of advice there as well. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. That will conclude um, tonight's session. So we thank all of our schools for being here. And thank you also for joining us tonight. Um, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five-question survey. So we'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide.
Uh, we encourage you to check back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions both today and tomorrow. You'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash greater Arizona. That's strivescan.com slash greater Arizona. Thank you so much and have a great evening.